What's up, everybody? It's Jason back again with Campbell's Morel Music Rig Rundown, episode 18. Uh, the very first episode we had was with Mr. Matthew Sykes of The Kindest People. And now, episode 18, we're fortunate enough to get the, the other guitar player in that band, Mr. Spencer Odie. Man, thanks you, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Thanks for having me, man. This is a blast. Yeah. I'm very excited to be a part of it. We've, we've had the, uh, the whole Kindest People lineup on our radar for rig rundowns. So if we can get Evan in here, mm -hmm. you know, Evan's probably the most shy. <laughs> not on stage. Not but, on stage, yeah. but in no, person. Yeah. About that. You just, if you know him, he ain't, but yeah. uh, he's and me, a character. He's a character. Yeah, we definitely appreciate you coming. Uh, the kindest people, we're going to talk about them a bunch during this show and everything. And we've come a long way since that first episode with mm -hmm. Matt. We may, have to, we may have to come back or do another one of him again later on yeah things are always changing that, that's well i know and he's so talented and plays so many instruments right and else. yeah yeah his solo band stuff could come in like on, on drums or, yeah you know he could pretty much show anything off oh absolutely so yeah uh spencer with the kindest people and uh man we jump right into this rig because it's mm -hmm. it's one of the most impressive rigs i've seen uh, yet i appreciate it man uh, I, I it's uh it's my pride and joy really man it's, yeah it's everything um, I always start with guitars, mm -hmm. and uh, it's the easiest way to get started into this thing. So, uh, Telecaster, again, my favorite guitar of all times. Yep. Most versatile guitar I Good think man. there is out there. And if you just want to talk a little bit about what, what kind of tele you got. And mm -hmm. Sure. Um, so, this is a Nashville Deluxe um, tele. Got it back in uh, probably like 2007, um, and it's just been everything since. Um, so when I first like real guitars, I went yeah. from my, you know, Washburn X series um, and learning. And it was funny, I, I went in there with the idea, I was in seventh grade, I was like, I want a Schecter. Yeah. So I, you know, I went in uh, to, to Guitar Center and fell in love with a Tele instead. Mm -hmm. And I thought I hated Tellys, but you know, uh, between all my other guitars, this is just one that, like you said, it's, it's very versatile. It's just, it's a tone monster. Um, what I love about this one, the, the Nashville Deluxe has a, a strap pickup in the middle. Mm -hmm. So you got, I got two Tex-Mex uh, pickups um, and then you got a strap pickup in the middle. So it's it's really versatile. But so you can get some of that strap sound out of mm -hmm. the, to, in the Tele. And it's still, it's not quite that strap sound at all, but it's it's an interesting different, you know, option here right. in, the, in the middle. Well, it's a five-way selector, so you can, you know, get a, lot get of a little tones. bit, you know, of each. So, but I typically just, just go right down in the bridge pickup almost all the time. Every now and then I'll slap it up if I'm, um, depending on the line, um, you know, um, and what purpose, but typically. Right Sweet, up. yeah. Um, just pretty much all stock. Yeah, from, yeah, uh, everything weekly. is 100% stock on this. So. Yeah. Um, didn't really, I mean, maybe one day I'll do some upgrading, but I don't see the need exactly. Like, it yeah, just sounds. Yeah, broke. Man, yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> yeah, so we, then we'll come out of that into your pedal board, and mm -hmm. I will talk about your pedal board being one of the most organized and sweet looking pedal boards that I've ever seen. Uh, as far as trying to know, get it even more like, you know, perfect. Yeah, Eventually just, I'm gonna get the uh, the power supply mounted underneath and yeah. um, once I fill up the board a little bit more, I need a couple more pedals just to make it not look <laughs> weird, right? Yeah, but, yeah, it's it's very clean wiring and that helps with not only aesthetics, but when mm -hmm. you're playing live, it helps not having cables all just yeah. mumbled and everything else, so. Absolutely. Um, as with almost everybody that we've ran down, you start with a tuning pedal. Got to have that at first, you know, on the first. It's uh, important to stay in, in tune. Uh, it's pretty important. <laughs> I would uh, recommend it. Yeah. <laughs> I've, you know, there's a lot of players out here, that they, they, whether it's a snark or, or a, mm -hmm. you know, a stomp tuner, either way. It's, I break those clip-ons all yeah. the time. All yeah. the time. When, in the electric rig. You don't helps. have much to clip onto with the, with the telly and it just, oh, it yeah. just will pop off and break. But. Yeah. But yeah. And it's good to have just to mute your signal every time mm -hmm. when you're tuning also. Absolutely. So uh, yeah, and man, if you want to talk about you out of your Boss TU2 mm -hmm. and what, how your chain goes, and then maybe if you want to play some when okay. you're talking about them or just sure. go however you want to run through it. Sure. Um, so yeah, obviously going uh, through the tuner here and then I'll jump up to the compressor. Um, it, that's a JHS Pulp and Peel. Um, I think that's V2. If I'm not mistaken, um, it's definitely one of the earlier ones. Um, standard compressor, um, just you know, got your volume on it, uh, got a blend, and your compressor. Um, I typically just run everything um, 
right about two o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock. Um, volume typically, well, with this amp, I have to tone it back a little bit because yeah. it's a little meaner. So, um, so I ride it about right at halfway. Um, Is that something that particularly stays on most of the time? Or? Yep. On my board, this one will always stay on, and I almost never um, change any of the settings. If I'm at home and doing some stuff, potentially, or maybe in the uh, recording, but um, nine times out of ten, it's just going to stay on right where it's at. Gotcha. Yeah, so but yeah, from there, JHS, I'm, I'm, you, pr you probably got that here, but I'm not sure. I actually did. did. <laughs> that was one of my first pedals, well, and I yeah. got it right here. Yeah, we that was still, a good day. We got the new version of that also available. He's worn that one out. You were worn the ink off. Right. Of that. <laughs> That's what I see on a lot of JHS, like early ones, because they kind of just, it, I think they just stamped them on there. Yeah, I'm pretty or, sure. It was probably just some sort of screen print or something, but it's yeah. not the, the best quality. But, yeah. That's what kind of you expect, I guess, over <laughs> yeah. a little time. For sure. But yeah, from there. Um, I jump over and it just goes all the way down the line. So I'll okay. jump into some reverb. Um, I've got the Strymon Blue Sky. Um, I got this here as well. And a very versatile reverb. I use uh, a lot of things on that. Um, usually I find myself a lot of the time with the mod um, and then on room for the, two, for the mode and the type. Um, depends on what I'm doing. I might um, roll all these down, the pre-delay, high damp, and low damp. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, because it, it can get really washed out really quick. Yeah. But just for something, just kind of just standard. Like this is kind of a sound. Just kind of something like that. Just a. It's got a nice. Yeah. Kind of a modulated effect underneath it, and just kind of warbles around. Yeah. And I really like that. <clears throat> um, so, um, a lot of the times I'll run to the shimmer as well, and I'll put it up on plate, and. Um, this gets just a really nice, it adds some octaves to it. I like that for a lot for swells um, and things of that nature. And a lot of the times I'll throw on a delay as well, which I'll go ahead and do for that. Uh, first I'll do it with just the, the Strymon, but if we got like. That's just the tone there, so with some swells. Almost kind of like an organ type of yeah, thing. Yeah, very churchy organ yeah. thing, yeah. So that's that's very fun sometimes, but um, I typically, because Matt has a very um, large pedal board as well, so yeah. we try not to over modulate over each other and stuff like that. So yeah. uh, I try to just kind of keep something kind of, it's noticeable, but still in the background. Of things, for sure, so. yeah. Doesn't, doesn't wash your mm -hmm. whole thing out, for sure. And from there, um, go over to the Meteor Lo-Fi Reverb um, from Caroline Guitar Effects. Okay. Caroline Guitar Company, I think. Um, those guys are awesome. Um, I found them back in college, and I just fell in love with their one of their artwork. It's very neat. Uh, it kind of reminds me of um, like the old orange amps, mm -hmm. with just instead of having any words or lettering, symbols. it's just symbols. So yeah. that's I always thought that was just a really attractive uh, feature that they they, ha they have. But um, yeah, this one's really fun. Um, this was my main reverb until I got the Blue Sky, and I kind of still go back and forth. I just really like some of the tones I get out of it. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the things I'll keep kind of rolled back because um, it it can get out of control really fast. It's really fun. So, and I'll, they uh, they call it the Havoc switch, mm -hmm. and so that'll um, and adds like a layer of sustain, but it's not like you would see like on the um, uh, the electro harmonics freeze. Freeze. It's not like that. It adds. It's it's a similar latching thing like that, but it, it adds some extra flair to it. I'm gotcha. gonna explain yeah. it. So. So that's. I just love drawing out some parts. So yeah. If I'm like on a line. So just a little bit, it just starts going out of control. So that's, you'll hear that all over a lot of early stuff from the yeah. tennis people. Uh, I guess I had a problem with just <laughs> using that all the time, but still love it. It's one of my favorite pedals on the board for sure. Yeah, that's, I've not seen that pedal before, so that's, that sounds great. Thank you. <clears throat> Um, from there, we jump over to the Twister. Got this uh, in the used selection here. Um, that is, it's a chorus and a flanger. Um, I 
pretty much just use it for the flange setting. Mm -hmm. um, the core sounds great, but uh, just, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's what you expect from a good flange. It's just got the... Very swirly, and yeah. obviously it can get a lot heavier. Uh, but I usually uh, keep it right about on that. I'll, I'll run some some different lead lines and, and stuff. Typically, um, maybe some different little high parts. Um, kind of just. In that setting, it's just got that. It just adds another layer of texture for sure, and like mm -hmm. that swirly thing. You for said. sure. And yeah. When, when I start just, you know, pairing it with everything <coughs> else, it, it can. Yeah, Take you just, for a ride, but it's yeah. <laughs> another world, another dimension. And then the next pedal that I really enjoy on my board, it's super versatile, and I try to use it as much as I can in all those ways, is the Reflector from Old Blood uh, Noise Endeavors. Mm -hmm. um, really cool company. They're making a lot of awesome boutique stuff. Definitely recommend anybody to check that out. Um, so between the settings we've got here, um, I've got the washed setting. So that's that adds a almost just like a little bit of reverb to it, to yes. your chorus signal. Um, mirrors will add a little bit of, uh, almost like a flanger type effect to it. You get some little more highs. Mm -hmm. And then wrinkle is just pretty much, uh, you can use the modulate knob. So this is the modulate knob will control all, pretty much everything that changes between the, the switch. Mm -hmm. um, so up in wrinkle, it's it's an, like, pretty much an octaver. And uh, it's pretty interesting. So in the, in the washed, setting almost like a reverb but you turn that modulate down a little bit and we can just get that a good coursey tone I really like doing a lot of my lines on mirrors Wrinkle's pretty fun. I, 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 I've wanted to um, use the um, expression jack and and um, control the and, cro and control that and kind of do like a whammy. Oh yeah. With it, and I, I've seen some videos of it. and It's really neat, but yeah. I need a bigger board. <laughs> <laughs> but this one's kind of cool. Um, pretty much, I run it either all the way down or all the way up to provide the the octave. You know. I got you. So. now and then I'll get crazy on stage and just start twisting all the knobs oh, and getting yeah. wild with it but so that's that's pretty much it for when it, uh, for all my modulated effects um, and then we start jumping into my um, overdrive Overdrives. And distortions okay. So you run you run in your overdrives and distortions after the modulation. Mm -hmm. So that's cool. Yeah. Yep. Uh, I've ran pretty much everything all different ways, but I've, I really like my time based effects uh, closest to the amp. Gotcha. Um, this actually has, a, has an effects loop. I haven't played through it yet, but mm. I'm, I'm, I'd like to see how that can change maybe some of the some of the sounds. Yeah. Like some of the time based effects especially. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I found I really like my modulated uh, closest to my guitar and my time based at the end, and then like in the the meat in the sandwiches yeah is all the distortion the overdrive but. sweet yeah <clears throat> so uh out of the old blood noise you're going in that pork loin or mm -hmm. okay so it goes right to the pork loin i use this one as more of just kind of a clean still an overdrive but more um, to boost other pedals and such gotcha um there's a lot of times i noticed at least with my vox that i would need a little bit extra mm -hmm. uh, on stage it just wasn't didn't have everything i needed so that's been a good pedal um, it's, I've noticed with this new uh, amp that I've got, it's um, not used as much because uh, the amp's already got a pretty good driven tone. It's right. not as clean as I think a lot of fenders you hear. Right. And I, it can, but I, I like to kind of keep it a little, with a little bit of, um, you know, a little punch to it. You're right. But, so the pork loin is really cool. Um, just.
just adds just a little bit of punch yeah, to it. Yeah, just pushes the amp a little, but, a little harder. Right. It's really, it's good for, you know, if I wanted to, I usually run that one and the Timmy together. Got gotcha. Doing some, especially some solo lines or any, um, anything I feel like I need to be brought out a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, I'll usually turn that on with it. So it's. Yeah, I really yeah. like that combo together. Yeah, that um, sounds great. And then I recently got the gearbox. So we go from the pork loin. Um, and I usually, you know, pretty much, we'll go back to the pork loin. I don't do too much changing on this. Uh, I like running the, the tone almost all the way up to just brighten it up a little bit for me. Right. Um, clean and curve. Um, you don't really notice a whole lot of difference, at least I haven't mm -hmm. with tweaking with those, but it's it, it gets, a, you know, a little bit of difference potentially. Um, but pretty much this stays almost as is as well. Um, all the other pedals start changing um, per song and yeah. everything like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we go from there and then go to the Wampler Gearbox. Uh, recently got that. Um, and I, I love this thing. Uh, so it's two overdrives in one. Mm -hmm. um, on one side, you've got um, the Tumnus mm -hmm. overdrive from Wampler. Um, it's based um, loosely around the, um, the Klon. Pedal, so yeah. it's um, everybody's got their clon clone. Oh, right? you gotta have a clon clone, right? <laughs> clon clones are important. I ain't spending what, no eight thousand no, dollars. None of us uh, <laughs> musicians go full to clon for sure. Oh man, but yeah. So on the right side is that one. Um, it's just a you know simple when it comes to um, just the the controls. You got three three knobs for that one right here, um, and that sounds it's a good little drive. Um, I, I use this one pretty frequently now as well. And what's really cool about this pedal as well um, is it has a channel selector mm -hmm. between the two. So, you know, obviously how you run your pedals is important. It's going to change your tone. If I have, you know, one overdrive and I'm stacking it with another, it's going to sound different right. in different places. Right. Um, so this one's it's cool. So if I uh, first of all, this is the um, the pinnacle side of right. the pedal. So that's one of their more high gain, and it's it's definitely it pushes the amp and yeah. I, you know it's a lot of the times i feel like it does get a little noisy on stage for yeah. me but still it's it's an awesome pedal and uh it's got some really cool just overdriven hot distorted tones so if you stack them though Yeah, that's it's very, great you know, obviously very similar to kind of the setup I had with the pork loin and the Timmy. It's all but all in one box, <laughs> right? It's all in one box. And well, you know, I've got a big pedal board, so got to keep some pedals on it. Yeah, got to have keep a variety. It. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then from there, we go into the time-based things. Um, the Trimatron, one of my favorite pedals. It's it's a lot all in the box, that's for sure. <laughs> um, I, um, so Definitely one of the coolest pedals I've ever seen. Hey, thanks, man. Yeah. Stone Def is an awesome company. They're based out of UK. Okay. Uh, they've their artwork is amazing. Their their builds are amazing. You should definitely check them yeah, out if you haven't yeah. or anybody if you haven't heard of them. They're top notch and really good to work with. I had actually a small issue happen. Um, yeah. And they were extremely like willing to help and you know got it as quick as they could. Yeah, that means even coming from the UK, it only took like within the weeks and yeah they were on it so it's i appreciate that but yeah i pretty much just use this as i've got four presets but i pretty much just keep it on the first preset and then if i need more i'll add um more depth more rate to it like mm -hmm. on the fly mm -hmm. um but yeah it's it's a cool little thing i really like this guy so we got the tone knob now here we go so yeah this, this is a fun one right here Run through a couple of the presets I have here. Um, this is um, so. What's cool about the Trimatron is you can actually stack um, these tremolos uh, on each other. So there's dual tremolos. Um, you can go through. There's uh, almost ten different waveforms. Some oh, yeah. some of them you can 
Um, you can use half in, in each. Oh, gotcha. uh, it's it's wild. You can get a lot of cool effects from this one. But um, you can also change the um, um, the time in it. Um, so it go from quarter uh, triplets, you know, sixteenths. Right. Um, so that's really neat, just on the fly. I, I really like that tone on that one. It's just, it's definitely different. It sticks out. Yeah, um, for sure. So I really like using um, the first and second one. Like I said, I usually use the first preset, but every now and then, depending uh, for the song, number two will come out. It can get, it can do some crazy things and gets really distorted on itself. Mm -hmm. you know, obviously, if you're changing how things are, you know, beating against each other yeah. like that, and um, it's, it's kind of interesting. It's like an octaver and. Last one's just almost the same as the third yeah. one. It really is. So, but yeah, this is a awesome pedal, and I use that probably between the reverb and the tremolo. That's the my two most two used yeah. pedals for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> and then um, from there, um, we bounce over to the uh, the Boss Wazacraft uh, DM2W delay. Um, I'm sure a lot of people know about that one. That's a very just well known uh, delay pedal. Um, Really love. Uh, it's it's actually my first analog uh, delay that I've ever had, so that's been really fun. Because uh, you know I've always enjoyed just you know having something I can I can rely on the tap tempo, but um, it's it's kind of fun not having it exact sometimes and yeah. just having a little you know. Um, yeah, and given that with it, you know. darkness, that modulation that mm -hmm. it provides, yeah. Yes, yeah. I always run it with the. Cause you can do it like a standard and a custom. Uh, I think it stands for custom. There's an yeah. S and a C. Yeah. Um, and that adds a little bit more of the modulated I got uh, to it. And I really like, yeah, that's right down my alley. Yeah. But th this one's a really fun one. I'll um, just do a little bit on this one as well. So I'll usually run this one right at five o'clock. And that's right about usually where I want to be a lot of the time. If I need to, like on the fly, it can, it can change a little yeah. bit, you know. I want to add instead of just going right on that's pretty much my um so right here in the middle that's pretty much what i use uh, I to be you. right on the eighth note. yeah and then if i want a little bit more maybe like closer to the triplet feel i'll go to about uh about two o'clock or so and A slap back kind of feel yeah. with it too. Yeah. So yeah, I really enjoy this pedal. I, this is actually a, kind of a recent one I got as well within the year. And, uh, it's been interesting uh, going from the TC Electronic Flashback X4 mm. um, and having a lot of presets and uh, looper and everything on it. And yeah. Just kind of concentrating. You know, just yeah. Just going one. straight. Yeah. Down to one and just focusing on one delay pedal. It's it's been really nice. Yeah. I feel like sometimes you can have too many options as far as delay goes and kind of get lost mm -hmm. and when really you can do a lot with just one pedal, you yeah, know, and that's, that's very true. Yeah. And uh, uh, a really great sounding analog delay, by the way. So it's, yeah. yeah. And uh, the loop pedal is, it looks like the last thing on your board. Do you yep. use that much live or is that? Not live, okay. no, never live. So that's just, that's for fun at home, yeah. you know, having a good time, uh, just, you know, jamming in my bedroom and uh, yeah. Um, we have a lot of other players that say they play a lot of loop pedals and create a loop and get it going and just start, playing their pedals you know they'll mm -hmm. twist knobs and get different things going yep. on yeah that's very neat um yeah it's yeah, so a, this the is a, the RC2. pedal i do not rc2 yep the rc2 yeah it's one i don't utilize to its full potential um yeah. i like it pretty much just for being a loop um, yeah I, you know it has some uh, some drum effects with it and um it's not bad um i just really haven't tapped into it and really understand how to use it to its full yeah. potential uh, you can definitely like you can save a bunch of things a bunch of loops on there and and access them but um, yeah, um, but I think yeah, loop, loop. yeah, and loop pedals are great ways to find tone too. Mm -hmm. Like you can get something going, dial something on your amp, <clears throat> try different pedals, going back into that loop and see mm -hmm. how it changes and how it affects the sound too. Exactly. So, yeah. Yep. That's. Uh, <clears throat> I spend a lot of my time doing that, just trying to be creative, um, whether it's um, you know for a project or anything, mm -hmm. or if it's just 
um, something that's just I you know need to need to play about. You know, yeah, just uh, get my sure. to play a little bit and just make some some new random notes. You know. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I mean that that is a great looking pedal board, great sounding pedal board. Thanks, Jason. I love the way it's set up and the way you use it. And uh, coming out of that, it's probably into your newest acquisition that mm -hmm. I think that I could think of. It uh, is the newest. So uh, it's a very interesting amp, and you know I'm a Fender nut, and I've, I can honestly say I've never seen a Fender 75 before. They are. It's a rare amp. So I mean, when you find them, they're not um, extremely like they're, they're not super expensive. Uh, yeah. They were built in 1980 and 81. Okay. Um, it was actually built by, I believe his name is Ed Johns. I, I might be, or Jans, I might be butchered in that name, but uh, he was a, he, he built uh, Fender's loudest, most powerful amp. It was, uh, I think, a 200 watt amp. Okay. Unreal. Um, but yeah, this was uh, one of his things, uh, the Fender 75. Um, I do believe it was uh, repurposed at some point. Um, a lot of the times you'll see these in, a, in just a combo. Gotcha. Um, and they had 212s and 115. Um, uh, speakers with them and sometimes you would I, i've seen some uh different things uh in listings on reverb or doing research i've seen some uh head and um uh speaker combos but not as often as uh, i'm sorry yeah that as the combo amp so right and you bought basically a full stack this with two cabs but we, we just brought one today right yeah for uh demonstration purposes but it's, it's a 115 cab yep 115 so um like i said i think <coughs> it was kind of repurposed um and put into a new enclosure um, it's got PV Black Widow speakers. Uh, oh, okay. To, um, so this is just 115. I got another um, cab as well, like you said, another 15. Um, man, just a really fat tone. It's just so beefy. Yeah. Um, I, I love it. I thought I was, um, so it's, it's cool. It kind of com completes my speaker um, collection with amps. So I've got a 112, uh, four tens and then now 215 so oh, okay it's, it's cool to have a little you know a variety variety to choose from yeah you got a lot of uh pull knobs on here too like yeah. treble you can boost your trebles and your mids and bass for sure then yeah. you got lead channel which uh, i guess you switch via foot switch yep yep so, so the the um, they say it's uh completely two separate i think but i'm not completely sure if they are two independent channels but uh it's it's pretty neat what you can you can get out of this amp you can definitely push it um, I love the, the low power feature. So yeah. you can go from, I think they say down to 20 watts, I believe, but it, it's louder than 20. Yeah. Uh, but 75 at the most, I mean, this thing can definitely just scream. Um, it's got a decent reverb um, in it. I'm not sure well, about like, the springs or anything and the, the whole unit in there, but um, it sounds pretty good. I kind of leave that right about eight, just always have a little bit of something, even if, you know, I'm if using, using others or if I'm not, like I just gotcha. like some reverb. <laughs> yeah. But, um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty neat. I'm um, going to see if I'm... push it a little bit more um, I mean if we wanted to you know add all the extra gain I mean it will just start just obviously feedbacking on itself Yeah, definitely. Definitely got Fender, the Fender classic tone, but mm -hmm. a little bit more versatile. A little bit more, and you know, um, this amp was built in um, 80 and 81, so there's not a lot out there that you can do a lot of research. Um, it was, uh, it's hand wired, so that's really cool. Um, it's cool to, to dive in there and kind of just check it out. And if I ever needed to do maybe some mods, I can I can get in yeah, there and, sure. and work on that. It's it's really cool. Um, but yeah, they built this uh, to kind of rival something that Mesa Boogie was doing at the time, and um, add some gain to their, you know, their, their catalog. And, um, it just didn't catch on, I don't guess, but, uh, I'm, I think it's a cool amp. Uh, I got it for yeah. a decent deal and just, uh, I, I just love old amps and anything, that's yeah. especially hand wired, um, and Fender name. I'm going to jump all over. Yeah. It. You mentioned earlier too, that you, uh, 
Your other amp you usually run is a Vox. Mm -hmm. So I've, I've been running yeah. the Vox AC15 for the last uh, about two years or so. Yeah. Um, before that, Fender Super uh, okay. Reverb. I love that one, but that thing is just so heavy. heavy. Oh yeah. my gosh, I'm tired of carrying that around, especially up and down steps and stuff. Yeah. But well, now here I am with a with another you know, yeah. with, a, with a stack. But it's it's still very light. I mean, in comparison, it's not as awkward to carry. Yeah. It might be an extra piece, but it's not as awkward. So. It's a very cool piece. Like I said, I you know I. I've been a Fender guy for a long time, and like I said, not not seen this amp personally. I've seen in the mid '80s, the late '80s, they had like that Rivera mm -hmm. era, you yep. know, where he built a lot of stuff with more gain and yep. and things. And they usually had the red, the red knobs. knobs. Yep, that and, was uh, awesome. But Fender did some weird things throughout the years, mm -hmm. and usually uh, a lot of them caught on, and but a lot of them didn't. And uh, it's it's cool to see some of that resurface mm -hmm. and and used again for sure it's like um, definitely one of the last like and like i said i think it was repurposed but it's still got that like um the what is it the the, the black face look um, yeah it's just you know it's the iconic classic Fender, yeah um and you know because from there i feel like they they started dipping in the 80s a little bit they weren't they weren't as popular there were other yeah you know, for sure yeah people were diving into marshalls and mesas and yeah everything else in between you know um, and it's it's funny you know how different things sound to everybody's ears and, and the very first marshall was basically a Fender Bassman, mm -hmm. you know, that they turned into a Marshall. But uh, yeah, we talk about just some weird things that Fender done over the years and uh, with their amps and some things caught on, some things didn't. Mm -hmm. uh, but like I said, again, it's cool that this thing's resurfaced and and actually getting used out there in the world. I agree with that. Yeah. I, I'm lucky to have it. Bringing yeah. it back to life. Somebody's got to. So. <laughs> yeah. Thank um, you. Man, we t you know, everybody in Johnson City that that watches us probably know the kindest people and if you don't there's something wrong with you so i mean <laughs> they play everywhere and they're one of the best bands i've ever heard live and i appreciate that uh they're kind words full, yeah full well you're all the kindest people kind <laughs> words for the kind. no they are truly the kindest people and every single one of them are the the nicest people i've ever met and awesome to be friends with and everything so appreciate hey, you doing man. this and y'all check out the kindest people uh their band camps their social media is give them a like and follow they've got a lot of music out there and they they play a ton and uh we try our best to try to get out at least you know once a month if we can yeah uh, it depends on what's going on and you know sometimes more uh, yeah we're taking a little bit of time not completely off i would say uh, we're slowing down shows through the summer working on album number six so it's been very exciting i uh, kind of just started piecing some of that together uh, mm -hmm. within the last couple of weeks um, at least the full band anyway um and it's it's been a it's been a blast so far and uh looking forward to sharing that with everybody yeah yes Sox was in here yesterday talking about some more of that and, mm -hmm. and uh i won't mention what he was buying because that might release i might tell the world what y'all uh -oh. got planned here in the you didn't future. even tell me uh-oh but uh yeah y'all <laughs> y'all definitely check out them and uh if, if you get a chance to go see them live it's a great show high energy appreciate it lots of good songs and you'll have a great time. Yeah, please come out and hang out with us. We'd, we'd <laughs> love to see everybody. Yeah. Uh, like I said, I've been. I think I've been here at Campbell's eight or nine years now. Mm -hmm. I'm not, you know, working wise. I've always been here, but working at least. And uh, for all those years I've been in here, and before then, you've been here mm -hmm. longer than I've been here, probably. <laughs> and uh, I don't know about that. But you. Uh, we appreciate you shopping local and keeping it here at Campbell's and always anytime uh, I can this is this is the, the first place I'll be and it's, uh, we're very lucky in this area to have a store like this and yeah uh, yeah there's not really anything like it within hundreds of miles I feel like um, even like in Asheville there's not you know great local stores like this um, and definitely just kind of the you get a just a different kind of uh, uh, Kind of relationship here it's uh it's it's very uh community driven it feels and everybody does care about each other yeah it's it's unlike anything else i've i've seen that's and that's the feeling i get you know we're all local bands we're also trying to support each other mm -hmm. love what each other's doing and and if we can keep it all right here in the community and shop local and you know, it's just better for the town better for the music scene i think absolutely yeah, yeah so yeah we appreciate you shopping here and, yeah. and keeping it always will you know most of his pedal board guitar and everything else probably came from here at one time so. it sure did <laughs> um i, I would say at least did. half the the half the pedal board did that's for sure yeah, yeah. a lot of, a lot awesome. of pedals i mean if you want to play some combination of things you do you don't sure. need to talk about it just okay. play licks and okay what would be like a verse and chorus or something you know or just something but uh, yeah all right
Heck yeah. That's just a little little run through a couple of my pedals there. Um, mostly just um, had on the por pork loin and the Timmy. Went through um, my delay and my, my tremolo. Yeah, man. That, a little bit of that. That's a very good use of the looper and it shows you how you can uh, create stacks and right. stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Sounds awesome. Thank it's great you. for creating ideas and when you're writing music for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm bad to, you know, forget, you know, things I maybe just, you know, kind of just popped in my head. And so it's nice to, if I have something, just to get it there quickly and, yeah. and you know, be able sure. to try to document that. But, but yeah, man. Heck yeah. Uh, again, it's Jason Campbell's Memorial Music, Spencer Odie with Kindest People. Thanks for having me, man. Thanks for coming. It's been we great. appreciate you. Absolutely. Y'all go get... check them out online. Come shop local. And we'll give you the best deal in town for sure. <laughs> Definitely come out and hang with hang with these guys and uh, check out the Dime Store Cowboys. And we got a new one, um, right? Is there yeah, a new project in the works? Yeah, there's a little bit of new project. Uh, like a Appala doom band, a little right? Appalachian Death Cult. We Appalachian got Appalachian Death yeah. Cult. Yeah, be, be so, on the lookout for that one too. All right, man. Yeah, appreciate Jason you. and Jason, thank you guys so much. I appreciate y'all. Yeah, thank you. See you guys.